Welcome then to the Baltic coast of Europe in the city of Vilnius, capital of Lithuania, and the venue for this year's UIPM Modern Pentathlon World Cup Final. And here in the green surroundings of Vingus Park, we're welcoming the sport's biggest names and most informed athletes who've lit up the 2017 season. The very best of the best, 36 men, women and mixed relay teams here in Lithuania to settle the score at the end of a tough year of competition. And just to explain, Modern Pentathlon is a multi-skilled challenge with athletes put to the test over five disciplines in one day. A 200 meter swim, the run, robin, epe fencing, the riding and finally the combined laser pistol shooting and 3,200 meter run event. It's unique, it's exciting and a tough test of all-round Olympic sporting abilities. The men and women compete separately, then join forces for a mixed relay to close the three days of competition. So with the scene set, we go straight to the men's competition and among the athletes here, ready for the first discipline at the pool. Pavlo Timoshenko, silver medalist at the Rio Olympics, the Ukrainian currently ranked world number one and the consummate all-rounder. Weakest perhaps in the pool and on horseback, but he's only missed one podium so far this year when he came fourth at the World Cup number three in Poland. Alexander Lezun from Russia, the Olympic champion. Currently ranked third, not so strong in the pool and possibly not at his peak form so far this year. While on the other hand, Valentin Prad from France, very much the man of the moment, first in Poland, second in Egypt, one of the strongest runners out there. He'll be hoping for big things here in Lithuania. I must admit my season was pretty good. After my fourth place in the Olympic Games, I picked myself up by focusing on the next Olympics with the aim of meddling in Tokyo. This season has been a great start for that preparation with two podiums, one victory and one second position in Cairo. I'm aiming for a medal here, then this summer during the World Cup Championship and then in Tokyo. My rivals are obviously the two Olympic medalists. Alexander Lesun is here and Pavlo Timoshenko is here as well. They have been my main rivals this season and I will fight hard to show them that I'm here and that they have to watch out for me during the next four years. And safe to say they'll all be giving it 100%. As now we hand over to our commentator Heather Fell for all the action from the pool. Two big names to watch in this heat. We've got Alexander Lassun, the Olympic champion, and Pavlo Timoshenko, the Olympic silver medalist from Rio last year. I'll be hoping to replicate those results. But at the halfway point, it's Hungary who have the dominance in this third heat of the day, being led at the moment by Gergely Demeter and his teammate Ben Harangolzo in a close second. You can see the outside lanes with Pavlo Timoshenko closest to us and Alexander Lassun on the far side of the pool in the white cap. Not having such a good race at this point with some work to do in the final stages of this 200 metres. It's still Gerge Demeter, the black cap of Hungary on the right hand side of the screen, who's going to be first at the final turn. 50 metres to go and he's being pushed all the way by Harren Golzo, his teammate. The final 50, still very much in touch. Tomoyuki Ono for Japan, staying with the leaders. Alexander Lassun, the white cap at the top of the screen, trying to stay in touch. But now the pace is really quickening at the front as Gerge Demeter in this third heat of the day is pulling away the final stretch of this 200 metre race. This is the third heat of the day, still three heats to go, but a very strong performance for the team of Hungary. And it's going to be Gergely Demeter who wins Heat 3 ahead of his teammate Bans Harangozo. And Tomoyuki Ono touches to take the third place. Valentin Prad currently ranked second in the world, already been on the podium twice this season. We'll be hoping to replicate here at World Cup Final. Well, the fourth heat, though, is taken by Denis Pavliuk of Ukraine. Still staying in touch, Valentin Prad, just touching now in fourth place with a time of 2.06.82. Ones to watch are the team of Korea, led by Wung Tae Jun and his teammate Jinwa Jung. They also have Ji Hun Lee going out in the outside lane, making up a strong team for the Koreans. They've dominated in the pool so far this season. Can they dominate here at World Cup final? fastest two seeds go in the center of the pool. Jun and Jung will be swimming side by side, but off to a strong start it is. Pavel Sevkov of Latvia on the left-hand side in the white cap. Soon evening out the rest of the field come alongside and it's very close at the start of this race. 
four lengths of this 50 meter pool, the final and fastest heat of the day. And these times will be converted to points. The first event in this World Cup final for the men's competition. And out of the turn, it looks incredibly close between all the athletes. We've got the fastest seeds by over a second, Wang Tae Jun and Jin Hua Jung. Very little separating them on their best times of the year. And very little separating them at the moment. A slight advantage there for Jin Hua Jung over his teammate as they come towards the halfway point, but still going very well in the outside lane. It's Pavel Sekovs, the Latvian going out hard and it looks like he might be first at the turn he is he leads at the 100 meter mark turning under one minute for the first hundred and strong out of the turn as well and really putting some pressure on the korean favorites who got some work to do in the center of the pool now Wong tae jun and jin Wah jung will hope to work together they're both breathing towards each other so that's all they're seeing and they probably haven't spotted pavel sevkos on the outside lane who's going very well no one swimming actually in lane number six so they might not be aware of the pressure that's being put on them with one length left to go at the turn. It's incredibly close still between these leading threes. The rest of the field just drop off out of touch a little bit. The favorites in the center of the pool are coming back strong now. Kan Svekovs, hang on. He went out so hard, but it looks as though Jung and Jun are starting to dominate this race in the final stages. It is a battle between the two Korean teammates as Svekovs has lost the pace and it's going to be right down to the final few strokes. Five meters to go. Jun and Jung battle it out all the way, but it's Wong Tae Jun who gets the touch just ahead of his teammate, Jun Wah Jung, and a strong swim for Pavel Svekovs out on the far side of the pool to finish in third. Well, there's the confirmation. It was a career 1-2 as expected and a strong swim by the Latvian to finish in third place. to the fencing ranking round and all to play for some valuable points in the fence these athletes are very much aware it's a straight final in the world cup final so this will be the first time fencing each other in this competition and that does mean that every athlete has to do 35 fights they will face each other for one hit each and it's incredibly important the fencing score alexander lesson of russia one of those athletes who really does rely on a strong fence. It is his key part of the modern pentathlon. And we'll be hoping for a good score to put him in contention. Well, he certainly got that, coming out on top, equal with Robert Kaza, with 24 victories overall. Well, on to the fencing bonus round. Valentin Balo having a strong run in the bonus round. One point for every victory. But it was his teammate, Valentin Prad, who started to put the pressure on. It was seven victories up until now for Valentin Balo, but Valentin Prad wins that and moves on up through the bonus. Balo leaves with his seven points. Well, further up the table, we have Ji Hun Lee of Korea. Strong fence for him. He's against Svederski of Poland. Lee saw his teammates do incredibly well in the swimming pool. He's now demonstrating this in the fencing bonus round. A lovely flesh attack directly to the body on Svekovs. He's celebrating that in style. Next up, Shea Frashad. Had a strong ranking round fence to see himself third overall just behind Lesun and Kaza. Can he add to that score with another bonus point? Jihun Lee has been on form so far with his bonuses and he's carrying on that form. Another flesh attack for Ji Hun Lee. Well, now he faces the overall leader, Alexander Lassun. We've had a withdrawal from Robert Kaza. So that means Lee is into the final round of this bonus competition up against the overall fencing winner, Alexander Lassun, the Olympic champion. Can Lee maintain this momentum he's had? Throughout this bonus round, and he does. Ji Hun Lee tops the overall bonus fencing round and adds another point to his overall fencing score. So 
though, with the fencing and swimming results combined. It puts Pavel Sefkov to Latvia out on top. Yaroslav Svodetsky had a strong fence, putting him in second. And the Olympic champion, Le Sun, still very much in touch in third place. On to the riding and quite a different challenge for these athletes. They ride an unknown horse with just 20 minutes in which to practice. Five practice fences if they choose to use the maximum allowance. And then they come into the arena. So Pavlo Timoshenko had a very strong fence keeping his hopes alive. So he'll be needing a clean ride. Maximum score is 300. But the athletes only receive that score if they're inside the time and make no faults on the course. It's looking good for Timoshenko at this stage. No mistakes made. Will he be inside the time and be able to get those maximum points? One jump left to go. And it is a perfect round for Pavlo Timoshenko. No faults, 300 points in total. Next up, Valentin Prade of France. He's definitely one to watch in this competition. He gets around this ride with a few errors. He's one to watch with a very strong laser run. It's looking good at the moment for the Frenchman. He's had the pressure put on him by Pavlo Timoshenko, demonstrating that clear round just before. And it's looking as though he might be able to replicate it. And it's another clear round. 300 points for Valentin Prade. Sharif Rashad of Egypt. Not as strong in the riding event as some of his fellow competitors. But off to a strong start. And he's having a great competition here today at this World Cup final. Just keeping his hands quite tight on the horse, but the horse still able to clear the fences. And that's what counts. A bit close into that jump, but still clear. Lost a bit of time, and he is three seconds over the time, but he'll be pleased to have no jumping penalties. Olympic champion, Alexander Lesson. Having a good start there with two rails going down already. And that will be costly for the Russian athlete. He's consistent in the laser run, but he's unlikely to move up through the field. And this is dropping him off. Another rail goes down there. And that's 35 points taken off his maximum score. Disappointing round for Lusson. Stas Fedeski of Poland, after that strong fence, sees himself in great contention, but not helping his hopes here as the rail goes down early on. He really does need to get a strong riding score if he's going to be in contention later on. 21 points will really make it difficult for Svedeski taking off his total score. Well, the overall leader coming into the ride, Pavel Seskot of Latvia, might be feeling the pressure a little, having seen a mixed bag, but a few strong rides, and it was very close at the top going into the riding event. So very little room for error. What can the Latvian do? Oh, there's a rail. That will be expensive. And another one. It was looking good for Svekovs, but just towards the end, getting a little bit sloppy. Two rails down. That's 14 points off his maximum score. And then a few time faults added to it. So dropping him out of the leading position. A little frustration on his face there. Well, just four riders with the maximum points. Pavel Timoshenko and Valentin Prad. Two of the ones to watch in that top four. And the overall lead has changed. Chef fresh out of Egypt now on top. But the strong laser run athlete Valentin Prad. Hot on his heels, Pavel Timoshenko in fourth, very much in the mix. Welcome back to Vilnius, Lithuania, where the first of the finals at this, the UIPM Modern Pentathlon World Cup final, is approaching its climax. The men's laser run, athletes readying themselves for this unique combined event, as now we hand back to our commentator, Heather Fell. Well, it's very close at the top of the table. Chef Rashad with just a one second advantage over Valentin Prad as the men head into the final event of this World Cup final. All to play for here. These athletes have been training for this competition throughout the World Cup series. And 
this is it. They are off on the four lap course. Sheriff Rashad will feel the pressure of the strong laser run athlete, Valentin Prad, who is literally on his shoulder. They pick up their pistols side by side. Next into the range, Pavel Svevkovs will be adding to the leading few, but Prad quickly out and takes the lead at this very early stage of the race. And it's going to be hard for the rest of the field to catch the very much informed Frenchman, Pavlo Timoshenko, the yellow vest there. He's one man who might be able to do that. Strong in the shooting and even stronger in the run. I think a few problems on the range there was Jihun Lee of Korea taking a bit longer than he would have hoped. And then Timoshenko already passing Rashad. So the lead has changed and the following positions are changing quite dramatically. Valentin Prad looking comfortable at the moment. Timoshenko will have his eyes set on the Frenchman. But it's a long way to go with three more shoots as they come in for the second one now. Prad on the range by himself for his first couple of shots. Shouldn't be feeling the pressure, but did just miss that second attempt. He's getting his rhythm, trying to control his breathing. And now the pressure of Timoshenko doesn't seem to affect Prague because he's out of the range. But Timoshenko just had one green light. So that just gives you a little idea of the gap between the leading two. But quick shooting there by the Ukrainian, and he is out back onto that 800 meter running lap. Prague has maintained that lead over Timoshenko. He's back onto the run. Alexander the Sun moving up through the field, trying to get onto the back of the two Korean athletes, Jun and Jung. And in the mix there, Svekovs, but he has dropped down from third. So not having such a great day on the shooting. We're leading this pack now, it is Jaroslav Tvedeski, started in fifth, keeping himself in medal contention at the halfway stage. So two shoots to go. Valentin Prad at the moment dominating this race. He's won a World Cup. He's had a silver at a World Cup, currently ranked number two in the world. He right now is the favorite, but Pavlo Timoshenko, the Olympic silver medalist, not letting Prad out of his sights. He needs some quick shooting though, because he's not making much of an inroad when it comes to the run. One more light needed for Timoshenko. He's got it, he's out. And he's comfortably ahead of the chasing pack, but he's got some work to do if he's gonna chase down Prad. You can see the distance between first and second on this sunny 800 meter lap. Well, this is looking like the battle for bronze here between Yasser Svedeski and Wung Tae Jun with just one shoot left to go. Here comes Timoshenko, crowd encouraging the Ukrainian. But has he got too much to do? Just one shoot left here as Valentin Prad be tasting gold at the moment. He's got three shots left. He knows he can outrun Timoshenko if he has to. We've seen this battle already this season, but not having as good a shoot here at Prad as he did earlier. Can Timoshenko make the most of this opportunity? And look, they are both on four green lights. Prad and Timoshenko leave almost together, and Timoshenko has just closed that gap dramatically on that final shoot. What can Timoshenko do on this final lap of running? We've seen Prad put in some really strong performances. The race is very much on for the bronze. And it is Yaroslav Sodeski who moves in front of Wung Tae Jun. The battle at the front of the field. The pained face of Timoshenko as he tries to close this gap on Prad. But Prad looking confident, looking strong. And the gap has opened again. He's already celebrating. Prad knows he's got this. The world number two adds another title. It is World Cup final winner for Valentin Prad of France. It'll be another silver medal for Pavlo Timoshenko, who's been on the podium in three out of four World Cups and now World Cup final. What a strong performance by the Polish athlete, Jaroslaw Tvedeski, who wins the bronze. I make a good first shot and after can I, I can control the, the race. I control Timoshenko and in the last is just a short distance but I have a power in, in me and it's good. 
every shooting was uh, four or five shots between us. But I understood that I almost get him. But he, he's good on the on the final lap, especially he very fast. So unfortunately, very close, but um, second position. And so the man of the moment, Valentin Prad of France, steps up to take gold here at the final round of the modern pentathlon World Cup. Second place, Pavlo Timoshenko from Ukraine, and third, Yaroslav Svidersky of Poland. Moving on then to our next final here in Lithuania, it's the turn of the women, the world's best performing modern pentathletes of the 2017 season. 36 of them all having proved themselves through four rounds of the World Cup series. Sir Alter Kovacs from Hungary, the defending world champion, very strong in the pool, less so on horseback, currently ranked eighth. She's been steadily improving through the season and will be looking to end her season on a high. Lena Schoenerborn from Germany, a former world number one, still recovering from an injury, so not too high in the rankings at the moment. But as she explains, all of that should change. I unfortunately had to skip the last two World Cup because I had an accident at German Nationals. So I was injured for uh, like around six weeks. Um, now I'm really glad to be back, back in shape, and hope and we'll see um, how far I can get here. Local hopes resting with this girl, Laura Asadiscanti, currently ranked number one and for very good reason, a fantastic 2017 season. Her first and a second in the World Cup so far, 2012 Olympic gold medalist, she is going to be very difficult to beat here on her home turf. I will definitely feel some pressure because this is the first time I have competed in Lithuania at such a high level. The responsibility is bigger, so there is a greater pressure to do well. There are about five really strong main rivals to me, and I think I will need success in the riding to compete with them. I will need success in each event in order to defeat them, but I do not know how it will end. We will see. All to be revealed now, though, as we head over to the pool to join our commentator, Beijing medalist Heather Fell. The action started in the swimming pool, and the crowd were out in force, ready to support the home favourite, Lara Azadowskaiti of Lithuania, the Olympic champion from 2012. We'll have them on the edge of their seats throughout the day. The event starts off in the pool, not Azadaskaiti's strongest event. She goes in heat two, but a great start for the Lithuanian. She battles it out between Agdeburg, the final stages of this 200 meter swim. The green cap of Azadaskaiti, stroke for stroke with Samantha Agdeburg of USA. And at the touch, it goes to Lara Azadaskaiti to the crowd's delight. Agdeburg in second. And third place going to Lena Schoenerborn. Fastest heat of the day sees favourite in the pool, Gonads Gobadalina. Going in the centre lane next to her, Mr. Volta Kovac of Hungary. And these two summers have been the top of the field for the whole season. Gobadalina actually unbeaten so far this year, and it looks as though at the latter stages of this race, she's going to remain unbeaten with just 50 metres left to go. Kovac, the only athlete to really put some pressure on the Russian. Also in the mix on the shoulder of Kovac, you see the green cap of Aiva Serapinaiti, giving the home crowd something to get excited about. But the Russian is starting to really dominate and what a strong final 50 metres by Gobadalina. She just stretched away from Kovac and she wins the heat with the fastest time of the day. Sarota Kovac takes second place in the swim and Aiva Serapinaiti touches for third. I'm happy with my result. It's very good. I thought initially that I hadn't done so well because the conditions of the pool were not easy, so I'm really satisfied. I will not try to predict the rest of the competition. I will just do everything I can and hope for the best. Hopefully I will be stepping on the podium. Sir 
So Gabadelina gives herself a five point advantage over Kovac of Hungary. And Ava Serapinaiti another five points back, keeping the hopes for Lithuania very much alive. Athletes move on to the next discipline, the fencing ranking round. And this really can change the order of the rankings of this first half of the competition. Put the athletes in their positions ahead of the bonus competition. Points are more valuable in the ranking round for every hit compared to the bonus round. Alexiev took advantage of the points up for grabs. 268 ahead of Francesca Tognetti. Lena Schoenerborn back from injury in contention in fourth. On to the bonus round. and Every victory is worth a modern pentathlon point. Kate coleman Lenahan really took advantage of this with seven victories in a row. That was until she came across Sanders Abubakar who put that run to an end. Another athlete having a great run in the bonus rounds, Gloria Tocchi of Italy. Seeing herself win a victory over Sorolta Kovac, the reigning world champion. Also beating Eva Serapinaiti in front of her home crowd. Tocchi even won the victory against Lena Schoenerborn, who's just back from injury. And that took her to the next fight against Sunwoo Kim, who was ranked third in the ranking round. Toki was ranked 13th. So that just shows how impressive her performance has been in this bonus competition. So we get very close to the top. Can Toki make her way all the way up through this bonus round? It's Sunwoo Kim who stops the inform Toki and moves on to the latter stages of this bonus round. Well, it's another Italian she faces now, Francesca Tognetti, ranked second overall. This is the penultimate fight of the bonus round. Sunwoo Kim with one victory over an Italian. Can she make it to the winner of this fight? Will fence the overall fencing leader. Sunwoo Kim putting the pressure onto Tognetti. Trying to stay light on her feet, but not quick enough for the attack that came from Sunwoo Kim. And that puts her into the final fight of the day, where she'll face Tamara Alexiev of Hungary. The competition now to be crowned winner of the bonus round, but also extra points available for the winner of this match. Sunwoo Kim has been on form with her two victories already. Can she maintain this run against Tamara Alexiev? Alexiev have had such a strong result in the ranking round, really putting her in contention overall. And she wins another point here and gets crowned winner of the bonus round to top off that strong fencing performance. Kim not able to maintain her winning streak. Well, the fencing and swimming results combined put Tamara Alexiev out on top. And it's actually Kim in second, Lena Schoenerborn returning from injury in third. Welcome back to Vilnius, Lithuania, where the final of the Women's Modern Pentathlon World Cup is very much underway. Two disciplines to go as next athletes take to horseback. So now we're at the riding phase of this World Cup final. The athletes making the most of their warm-up to get to know their unknown horse. Lara Azadaiskaiti of Lithuania will be feeling a bit of home pressure. Not a strong swim or fence, as so she needs a good ride here. What one rail down already. We know she's got a very strong laser run event, and she's going to need that today. If she can get around the rest of this ride. She can still move up through the field, and just one pole down gives her 293 points. of the swimming event, Gulnaz Gobadalina of Russia. I think we've seen on the podium 
in the World Cups this year. A strong run, and she's already in the top 10 before the riding. She gets around here smoothly. There's a rail down, but still in contention because that's the only mistake for Guba Dalina. The world champion Sarolta Kovac of Hungary will be hoping to get close to that performance she had last year. There's some work to do. She does help herself out with a maximum point riding score, though. The young Italian Francesca Tognetti had a very good fencing phase. The Italians naturally good in the riding, but it's not looking so good for Tognetti and several mistakes. 14 points deducted from her maximum score. Nina Schoenerborn has been out of action due to an injury. Still in great form in the fencing, as we saw earlier. The riding, she's had a few difficulties over the past couple of years. Saw a rail go down at that early stage. We don't know her fitness. She won't have that much room for these mistakes in the ride, and 28 faults will put her out of contention at this tight end of the competition. Sun Wu Kim of Korea in the second place going into this ride. And an early mistake there. Takes seven points off her total score. And that will take some pressure off the overall leader. Just looks a little steady here, taking a very interesting line through the triple. All that will add to those two time penalties she accrued. Still 291 for Sunwoo Kim. And our final rider, the overall leader tomorrow, Alexiev of Hungary. What can she do? She's seen a few mistakes from the previous riders. She could use this to advantage to extend the lead. It's looking good so far for the Hungarian. She needs to control her horse, looking for the next fence. Keeping an eye on the clock, we've seen a few riders crew a couple of time faults. A long stride there, a little left behind, but still clear at this stage. And she's not wasting any time around the corners, looking for her next fence. Riding very forwards on this horse. But still no faults. And so lucky at that rail. He knocked it, but she maintains a maximum score of 300 points. Delighted looking Alexiev. Oh, no wonder Alexiev was smiling. She's extended that lead at the top. Sunwoo Kim with a good round, puts her in second, and Alexiev's teammate Sorota Kovac making up the top three. Well, there it is, converted to seconds, and that just gives you an idea of the lead that Alexiev has, 23 seconds over her closest rival. So tomorrow, Alexiev with that huge lead, and it really is going to be a battle for the rest of the field to try and catch the overall leader, she has 23 second advantage over Sunwoo Kim. Sarolta Kovac, the reigning world champion, 31 seconds behind the leader and her teammate as well. So Alexiev sets things off. She'll be aware that there's some fast runners further back in the field. But right now, she's focusing on that first shoot. The first of four shooting series, four laps of this 800 meter running course. She comes in and picks up her pistol for the first time. And in theory, it has time to complete her shoot before the next athlete even joins her on the range. And it's a good start for Alexiev. Very consistent shooting. And she's gone before anybody else even enters the shooting range. Kim and Kovac side by side. But Kim with the advantage on the shoot at the moment. And Kim is out. Kovac joined by Toki. A little bit of pressure on the right-hand side of the second Hungarian in this race. Well, there you see the gap from second and third. Not much change at this early stage, and Alexiev remains focused ahead. She has just got to concentrate on her own race as the rest of the field battle it out. You can see a bit more of a bunch forming in fourth, fifth, and sixth place. Now, Azadai Skyti still keeping the hopes of the home crowd alive. Setting out in 14th with some work to do, but we know she's really strong in the laser run. The winner of the swim, Gabadalina, a strong runner as well as we've seen earlier this season. So the second shoot, Alexiev still not feeling the pressure. She keeps her calm 
on the range. She's got two more shoots to do after this, but a few mistakes there by the Hungarian. Will this give the rest of the field a little bit of a chance to close the gap, but still nothing significant there. Kim next on the range again, alone, joined by Kovac with just one more green light needed, and Kim is off. Kovac not able to close much of a gap on second place. Kim maintains that position out onto the next lap of running. Tonietti leaving the range with Gobadalina. A battle between those two at the moment. Can they make it up to a podium position? Alexiev still looking impossible to beat at this stage. Kovac not able to close any gap on the leaders, but this woman is making her way through the field. Gobadalina started down in sixth place. She's moving up gradually through the field as well. But no changes with the top three just yet. It's still Alexiev leading ahead of Kim of Korea. And then another Hungarian, Sirota Kovac, the reigning world champion, still in third place. This is the third shoot. We are past halfway now. No changes at the top. Alexiev keeping that focus. She's not really had any pressure and she still hasn't because she leaves the range just as Kim comes in for her third shoot. Seems to be spreading out a little bit more, but a couple of mistakes, three mistakes in a row there for Kim, who struggles to get that first shot away. And now Kovac could take advantage of those mistakes. Can she close that gap? Kim has left the range, but some of the athletes further down have taken advantage. Gloria Toki, one of them, she is started in fourth, but she's now moved up a position ahead of Kovac. And if you look further back, she's going to drop back again because Lara Azadowskaiti is getting this crowd excited as she storms past Kovac and will have her eyes set on that podium. But can she have her eyes set on the gold? Alexiev has one more shoot to go. When it comes down to a running race, Azadai Skyti would win it, but it's still another shoot to go. Toki still in the way of Azadai Skyti. Gobadalina trying to stay on the heels of Azadai Skyti. This final shoot is crucial and Alexiev is out and clear of the next athlete. It's Kim still in second place, but it's going to come down to a final 800 meter running lap. Toki, Gobadalina, Kim all on the range and Kovac seems to have dropped out of contention a little bit. And now out, Azadai Skyti has moved up into third. Kim in front of her at the moment with just 800 meters to go. Toki out next. It's going to be at such a battle on this final lap. A quick glance over the shoulder for Azadai Skyti, but she will be focusing on what's ahead. She moves past Sunru Kim with ease. Can she close this gap to the leader? Tamara Alexiev has led from the start. Such a strong performance. It was all down to that incredible fencing result for the Hungarian. And she's starting to look a little more relaxed, glancing over her shoulder. Azadai Skyti working right to the end. I don't think she can do it now because Tamara Alexiev is on the blue carpet. She's smiling. She takes the title, the winner of World Cup final. What a performance by the Hungarian. And as another strong laser run by Lara Azadaiskaiti, moving from 14th to take the silver in front of this delighted home crowd, a delighted winner of World Cup final. Tamara Alexiev celebrates. She's joined on the podium by Azadaz Gaiti and the bronze medal went to Gunas Gubadalina of Russia. Oh, my feeling is every, every perfect. <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm World Cup champion. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Did you know from the sound of the crowd Lara was catching? Uh, first and second round, uh, no. Uh, after, yes. Oh, oh my God, could he come? She come. Uh, but uh, I, I'm strong. <laughs> Uh, today is a very happy day, uh, a bad fa fencing, but horse riding and uh, combined event uh, today is perfect and I'm happy today's silver medal, sorry, <laughs> thank you. Today is very, very hard uh, day for me, it's very, but I'm so happy, third, uh, three place, third place is very good.
So local honour very much upheld. Laurid Acidiscounty taking the silver, much to the delight of the Lithuanian fans. The win, though, going to Hungary's Tamara Alexeyev, with Gulnaz Gubadalina of Russia taking the bronze. So confirmation of those final standings, a tight run thing for that third place, as you can see, just two points in it. The Russian Pippin, Belarusian Anastasia Prokopenko for the bottom step of the podium. Welcome back to Vingus Park in Vilnius, Lithuania, the host nation for the final round of the UIPM Modern Pentathlon World Cup. Time now for the mixed relay format. There's a male and female athlete in each team, but they compete in tandem. And for this World Cup final, we have the best pairings from 14 nations qualified through the four previous World Cup rounds. So it's going to be tough. The discipline's just the same as the individual finals. Swim, fence, ride, and finally laser run. So, to kick things off, let's head to the pool, where once again we join commentator Heather Fell. Team Mixed Relay. One man, one woman. And in the swimming pool, it's 100 metres each. Lithuania are off to a great start, trying to keep the home crowd excited. It's Justinas Kinderis, a former world champion who brought home the win in heat number one, along with his teammate Aiva Serapinaiti faster end of the competition. It was heat three. They got led out by Gulnaz Gabadalina, the overall women's swimming leader. The bronze medalist from the day before gave her teammates the biggest advantage she could manage, but Hungary still very much in the mix. Sarolta Kovac handing over to her teammate, Gergely Damata, and now the race between the men looks as though it's very much Russia and Hungary. Keep an eye on the outside of the pool as Ladigan O'Keefe has a strong first 50 metres. And now into the last stages of this race. It's still between Hungary and Russia. Gergely Demeter, Alexander Savkin coming into the final few metres. It's stroke for stroke between these two teams. It's been a battle the whole way through. And it looks as though Hungary are just going to get it at the touch. Gergely Demeter and teammate Sorolta Kovac win the swim ahead of Russia. And Ireland had a strong finish to come home in third. It was a good start for today. We are a good team. Uh, we train together, so we know each other. But I think uh, uh, for this competition, the main key will be the fencing. So now we have to prepare and concentrate to fencing. Very little separating the results after the swim. Hungary just one point ahead of Russia, Ireland and Lithuania, all on equal points. Fourteen teams make their way to the fencing ranking round where all of the men will fence the men, the women fence the women. They stay in their teams and their overall scores are added together to give the fencing ranking position. Valentin Prad, the winner of the men's event, competes again in this mixed relay. Well, after the ranking round, it's Ireland who are out on top ahead of France, Egypt in third. On to the bonus round, it's chance for teams to add valuable points to their overall fencing score. Julie Bellamry of France up against Heidi Morsi of Egypt, and Morsi keeps Egypt's hopes alive with that victory over the French team. performance by the young Egyptian, one of her strongest disciplines. It's the fencing ranking round. Well, next, she will fence Natalia Coyle in the final bout of the day. And another victory for Morsi with a perfectly timed flesh attack. So that leaves it down to the men. Egypt with the one point advantage, Yasser Hefni up against Arthur Lanagan O'Keefe. Well, Lanagan O'Keefe quick to score that point and that brings us to a tie. It's one apiece, Ireland against Egypt. This is the final bout. And it will decide the overall winner in the bonus competition. The next touch will win the overall bonus round. Ireland, the higher ranked team, but 
Egypt moved up, having beat the team of France. Into the end of the time, into the last 10 seconds, and Hefni comes with the attack, and he gets his point on target, and helps Egypt to win the bonus competition over the team of Ireland. Well, the overall scores, though, leave Ireland out on top, ahead of France. Lithuania keeping the home crowd excited as they stand in third position at the moment. On to the riding phase and the athletes still compete in a relay. The women completing the round of eight jumps and then making the changeover and their teammate will complete the second round. Two horses allowed per team. So Morsi and Hefni of Egypt set things off to a nice start. No faults on course so far and they completed both of their rounds without any penalties getting a maximum score in the ride lying in third place ahead of the ride the team of lithuania serapinite and kinderis made no errors on course using the home advantage to the max and the crowd loving the performance 300 points for the lithuanian duo and they've got all to play for as they head into the laser run French duo of Valarmi and Prad will be hoping to take another medal back with them. Prad, obviously, the winner of the men's competition. And he had another gold from this World Cup final. There's a bit of pressure put on from the clear round before them. But no mistakes for the French duo. Keeps them in contention. So the overall leaders last to go. Cole and Lanagan O'Keefe of Ireland. Strong in the riding phase, usually. They've got some margin in which to make a couple of mistakes, but none so far. As Danigan O'Keefe heads out onto the second round. And they manage to keep it clear, keep it clean. No penalties at all. So Ireland will remain out on top. And here's the combination of the scores. Sees Ireland ahead of France, Lithuania and Egypt. No changes with that top four. But look at the time difference. Ireland with a 23 second advantage. Well, it really is a huge advantage for the leaders. What can the chasing teams do? Ireland with 23 seconds ahead of France. Lithuania in third place. Kinderis finishing his warm up. The former world champion. Can he bring a medal home? in front of this crowd today. Natalia Coyle, the first to set into the shooting range. Ireland have been incredibly consistent in the team relay, and they've proved that so far today. Can they maintain their composure throughout this run shoot? Ronald Skabadalino of Russia already coming up onto the shoulders of Lithuania. But Ireland out in front. Just two shoots for the women, two shoots for the men, and Natalia Coyle maintains her lead Belharmery of France still in second place. Well, now it's looking tight for the bronze medal. Lithuania and Russia as Gobadalina moves ahead again of Serapinaiti. Egypt set off in fourth, still in third place at the moment, but you can see Russia starting to close that gap. France still in second, so no changes for the top two. And at the handover, Ireland, Lanagan O'Keefe, sets off into the range with a substantial margin but he will have valentin prad the individual men's winner on his heels and we've seen how fast prad is on the running course quick on the shooting range as well can the french close that gap and contend for the gold medal lanagan o'keefe with one more shoot to go prad still trying to hunt him down this final shoot really could be the decider only one more green light needed, and Lanagan O'Keefe has it. Still four more needed for Prad. And Lanagan O'Keefe now completes that final 800 meters as Prad out of the shooting range, but too much to do, and the battle looks like it's on for the bronze. Egypt and Russia battling out in the final stages as Ireland cross the line and take another title. They are winners of the World Cup final. Prad jogging home for the silver and the battle, a sprint between Savkin and Hefni. Savkin really opening up now. And it looks as though Russia have moved up from fifth 
and they're going to hang on the final few meters. Savkin stretching out. Russia take the bronze. Fantastic. We won the fence and we fenced really well. And then we had a good swim and then a clear ride and then a great combine. So it's just a dream. Yeah, I definitely. think that was probably the hardest relay we've ever done. It was yeah. a stacked field um, from top to bottom. And uh, we, were, we were going into it going, whoa, this one could be tough, and it was. But uh, I think we're delighted with that, yeah. to be honest. It was a brilliant day. Well, a closely fought contest brings us winners of the mixed relay in the shape of the Irish pairing of Natalia Coyle and Arthur Lanigan O'Keefe. The French team take the silver and the Russians going home with the bronze. So drawing to a close, three days packed full of exciting battles here at the UIPM World Cup Finals. If you want to see extended coverage from Lithuania, join us online at uipmtv.org.